Welcome to Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Robbie. This is our show about anything and everything off road. Uh, tonight we're going to go a little all over the place. I have a feeling just because it's it's been a hot minute since the three of us sat down together. So we're we'll kind of jump around. As always, we're socially distanced. It's the only way we do the show. I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast, and Robbie's kind of in the Midwest. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think my my geography definitions Wisconsin is the Midwest. I think we're the cutoff in terms of like going west like i don't i don't know i don't know like to me like south dakota is not like a midwest state right like that was somebody the other day was like everything west of missouri counts as the great plains and i was like have you looked at a map well that that would that would like i'm directly below the dakota so like (laughs) right right it would make sense like but also like the geographic center of the country is in my state so like wouldn't that be midway to the west like that's Anyway, this is it's a much bigger discussion than we have yeah. time for in tonight's yeah. show. Rem- um, and re- remind me to send you guys something about a video about Connecticut. It's one of the funniest things I've seen in a long okay. time. Because I would also argue like the state of Ohio considers itself in the Midwest, but they're in the Eastern time zone. So how the fuck can you be Midwest when you're in the Eastern time zone? State of Ohio considers themselves a lot of things that I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> agree with. Well, Ohio, Ohio to me is much more of a Midwest state than like South Dakota. Yes. Right. Ohio to me is like East yes. Coast. South Dakota literally, <laughs> South Dakota yeah, literally yeah. has yeah. yeah, I guess we're going to have to start a podcast about geography. Yeah, Ohio is just in. West, I love West maps. Pennsylvania. <laughs> My favorite maps are the people that, like, they've gone back and been like, label the states, and they have no idea where the states are. So Always a good read on Reddit when people don't know stuff you learn in third grade. Anyways. Um, Ross, do you want to start real fast? Yes, I have almost nothing to talk about this week on my end. Um, I'm driving an X3M competition, which oh, is... I'm so sorry. Oh, it's... Okay, so I will say the engine is delightful. The gearbox is delightful. The seats and the interior are, like, really, truly good. Um, and it is fast as fuck. There is no question. It is a freaking ripper. Like, oh, yeah. BMW quotes, like, 3.8 or 3.9 saw some magazines getting numbers down in the three, two, three threes to 60. Um, but the ride quality is dreadful, like mm-hmm. abusive on the roads here. You know, it's on like PS4 S's, which are an awesome tire, but not necessarily suited to something that's that heavy. It's a um, great race car tire. <laughs> it's, it was a great tire on my, my 2,500 pound Miata, you know, um, but the X3, how much does the X3M weigh? Let's take guesses. Uh, I'm going to guess and say... 4,200. Yeah, I was about to say 4,200. 4,620. 4,620, wow. It's a 4,600-pound car on, on wide PS4Ss, but it, it's it's a hell of a product. Um, they could have just done with better ride quality for the mm-hmm. same amount of speed, especially considering like the M5 is, you know, rides incredibly. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. You probably had, I'm going to guess and say you probably had 21 inch wheels on it. Great question. I do not know. Um, <laughs> I know the Range Rover that left had 23s. Jeez, and <laughs> yeah, I think it's 21s. I don't know. Either way, it's too big. It doesn't need that much break, you know, for the street. Like mm-hmm. nobody's going to track this thing. Um, but yeah, it's cool. Cool car. Um, they've come a long way. You know, they got big. They're the size of the original X5. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's not um, so much a compact anymore. It used to be, I mean, like when the first, do you remember the first X3? I mean, yeah. that was very small, Ugly. <laughs> almost like a wagon-esque kind of thing. But now like I it was, I had a X, I had the X3M competition back in March and I agree a hundred percent with everything you said. Like it's a, it is a hoot to drive. Um, I think it looks really, really nice too. Mm-hmm. It was gorgeous, but I think of every vehicle I've ever driven that had the worst ride. Quality. Oh my God. Yeah, because I think mine was on 21 inch wheels. Yeah, it had the super low profile t- pro tires. Um, and I remember even just like the the super, super nice seats. Um, you know, they were very comfy, but yeah, like in here in Wisconsin, like any pothole just like shot right up through your spine. But then that what's on the screen right now, um, yeah, I had the more like civilian tamer X3 X Drive 30i, which was excellent and i think that's all you need i don't think there's a need for an x3m competition unless you're strictly yeah. taking it on the track and it's, mean, it's a great looking vehicle it's like a tune away from being you know the same speed you know you mm-hmm. don't need the incremental jump um but it yeah it, it's a it's 
it's a fun car. It's um, mm-hmm. this one's 87, which is, you know, a big number for something with a, uh-huh. with the six, you know, and, and not the, uh, the eight because like X five M is probably where it's at, you know, like M five engine, SUV ride height, hopefully a little cushier. It's probably 5,200 pounds, but uh, yeah. it just says 21 inch M double spoke by eight, nine, two M wheels. I don't know, yeah, what, that what that, right. but it's uh, yeah, it's not what I would choose for around here. I think the F pace SVR was probably more fun and definitely more comfortable. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, if you live in like Florida, goddamn, this would be a great daily. <laughs> Good Did thing I don't with live in Florida. Hmm? Did you tow with the uh, X3M? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. That would have been kind of funny. <laughs> no, um, I would love to, <laughs> but I, the, the timing doesn't work out. Yeah. So the only, uh, the only real like exciting thing I've done recently on that front is I hooked up, uh, I, I, I have a Honda loan me a Ridgeline for a couple of weeks and I threw the 985 pound Polaris Sportsman XP 1000 into the back of it. And it fit, and there was room to spare, but I literally watched the tailgate go near. I was like, oh, oh, okay, we're going to take some pictures and get this out of here before <laughs> I do damage. Um, you oh, know, no. Like, that is definitely not its intended purpose. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yikes. So that's all I got. Um, we could talk about one other thing on my side real quick. Not really my side. Um, Andy Diodorsi, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Uh, Hooniverse contributor at once upon a time and uh, and man of many things has started this electric vehicle company out of nowhere, seemingly. Um, and he's working on, so the company is called mutiny and they're working on something called the goat, which is an electric four by four. And it looks like a Japanese oh, mini truck it's adorable. turned into, you know, small EV pickup, uh, for like work and, and Metro use. And there's not much in the way of details. And this is like, I mean, we ran this on UTV driver this week and, um, you know, I think Andy had just posted about it like at the end of last week, but this could be some fun stuff coming up. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Everybody should look at it. It it really looks like the front of like the Honda city E or what's that weird Japanese Honda, whatever the the carry all or whatever it was, maybe those Suzuki or something. I don't know. All those like little key trucks are adorable and they all look the same, but wow, that's a great idea for a, Mm -hmm. I mean, like think about, think about all the uses, like, you know, you've got uh, local DPWs that could use something like that airports. I mean, there's, there's such a market for that. Oh my God. This is the kind of thing that if it's done properly and priced right, would be like the perfect vehicle solution for like sports teams, you know, with big stadiums mm-hmm. or like, you know, uh, a local guy who's got a small business doing maintenance or something like that. But yeah, this could be fun. This could be cool. Um, so it's called the it. goat. It's called the goat. And it's made by a company called Mutiny. It will be made by the company will called Mutiny, which can you I'm, imagine? Can, could you imagine telling people like, "Oh, what do you drive? I have a, a Mutiny Goat," and then this little like adorable thing yeah. like pulls up. Oh, yeah, that's so cool! It's, I love it. it. That's awesome. Could be fun. I like that so. the the logos on the headlights look like tiny crowns. They little. They do. Oh, crown. oh good. Catch. I didn't even yeah. see that. <laughs> yeah. So this is. It's still. It seems like this is very very early stages of things, but hey, if they build this thing in Detroit and you know it does all the things that we want from a mini truck, but it's an EV. Fuck. That's the future of where that market needs to be, you know? And I don't know that, uh, the small pickup segment, you know, is basically consisting right now of like the Ford Maverick and they're doing away with like the work truck trims on a lot of other things. Yeah. So give us this. Yeah. It's funny because like small pickups, like I hear all I hear is talk of Maverick. Like, no one talks about the Santa Cruz. I mean, I it's like the, Santa, the Santa Cruz is just, I mean, yeah, it's like in the same segment and same type of vehicle, but I feel like it's like just completely, completely different in the sense of like, it's much more of like a SUV crossover based yeah. lifestyle vehicle, whereas like the it Maverick is. is definitely more of a truck. In fact, I think when I went to a backgrounder for the Santa Cruz, they were literally saying like, do not call it a pickup truck um sport but, like, it has a, but it has a bed and like i mean i had one for a week and i adored it i mean it was 
I was able to use it. I mean, it's, it's comfy to drive. It looks great. Like it's super practical. Um, I think the Maverick is generating a lot more of the buzz. I mean, A, because it's a Ford, but like then B, um, it's way more conventional, like pickup truck styling. And- also, it's way more efficient, especially with the hybrid. And it's way cheaper than the Santa Cruz. Yeah, that was like, mm-hmm. oh yeah. The, the price on it is the, that's like the big game changer for that vehicle. I mean, like, even though they raised the price up a little bit for this new model year coming up, um, it's still, I mean, cars are too damn expensive today and it's so good to have a vehicle like the maverick and i would even love to get like a santa cruz with you know like a stripped out santa cruz like you know i don't need all that fancy stuff like give me a santa cruz that's like in the low 20s instead of high 20s Mm. um but we'll see we'll see if that happens i still gotta drive maverick i've heard such good things i I want a maverick st if ford makes maverick st (laughs) with like you know like street styled, like a little lower with some turbo fans. Yep. Like, <laughs> yep. And it's got like a real like focus RS, you know, diff situation going on. I'm, I'm in, I'll buy one. I'm sure I'm, I would say I feel very confident that that's in the cards. And that's I sure should hope so. I mean, they're doing a tremor, you know, which is like. Yep. There's enough of a market place, to but... go with like the soft off-roader for that truck, but then also like, you know, street the, style. Yeah. Like kind of the, the, the street style. Like street that, style. You know? I think they should call it this. They should call it the splash. That's what they should call it. I know they splash. have like the Ranger. Yeah, well, like they have the, they have the Ranger. Ford came out with the Ranger. Like, uh, there's like a couple different splash editions. They're like doing like a couple different color themes, and then they're gonna release it this month, and then release it that month. And I don't know where they're at right now with them, <laughs> but um, they like totally dropped the ball on like putting like the the splash logo on the side of the tailgate, you know, and yep. I'm like, man, just like do that with the Maverick. Just call it the Maverick splash. Like they should. that same exact like late 80s, early 90s, like swoosh splash thing. I mean, people like all Dude. of us were going nuts over it. And <laughs> the shape of the Maverick is kind of reminiscent of like the the Explorer and the Ranger mm-hmm. from the 90s. Mm-hmm. You know, so it would be perfect. 100%. But they're they're doing what Jeep's doing with just like oh another month another trim like Chris was saying on the show we recorded um recorded the other night and uh, Chris was saying he saw high tide in the middle of Kansas I was like "Mm." (laughs) I left the varsity football game the other night I was parked next to a Jeep Wrangler high tide and I was like oh you're running into a lot of tides around here like (laughs) not that not that you need to live near the beach to drive that thing it's not like it's actually oh god. I'd get well, like a glacier just, edition and you live in florida there. well well stellantis you know i love stellantis but like they're definitely um what's the word i'm looking for they're really like dragging out the the whole like uh like not the, what do you call it it's like the built to serve editions oh god oh my gosh yes. uh, like the first responder like, style like yeah yeah milking I want, them to, I want the yeah milking there you go like <laughs> i want them to like i really wish they would like broaden that to beyond the 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 stereotypical definition of like a hero like let's get like a teacher edition you know let's get like a <laughs> like can't afford it either yeah. way <laughs> fuck oh that hurt. But, but you know okay like if they can't do like a 1500 like build a serve edition like do i don't know do like a jeep compass or something like you know yeah, yeah. Build a serve. I, I don't know i just have built to serve like, ranger uh, not ranger uh <laughs> renegade yeah renegade yeah um a but, dakota you know, oh, oh yeah soon enough. yeah it's uh isn't it coming back i thought it was coming back theoretically um <laughs> it's supposed as a diesel but yeah right? you're <laughs> didn't they just kill uh, the eco diesel the eco diesel is dead yeah, yeah. sad uh, it's dead in the wrangler not in the ram yet oh, but no Ra- robbie ram uh, is, i think they said ram is i think this is the last year yeah i thought it was oh really 1500 it was yeah. the last year oh, for it it's yeah, I'm pretty sure they just came out with like a, a final edition or they're about to or something like that. But mm-hmm. um, you know what's crazy is like if you ever if you ever go on like cars.com and you do like a nationwide inventory search for like all brand new, regardless of model year, all brand new eco diesel Wranglers, Gladiators, Ram 1500s that are like on dealer lots right now, it is a ridiculous amount. It's something I think like <laughs> 
of the tens of thousands on sale, it's like there's only like a couple hundred of each, if that. Like I read it, I read it curiously the other day, and I'm like, wow, there's just none of these on lots right now. And I just think, I just don't think light diesels are a thing here in the states. Like obviously they're, they're like they're, they're good in pickup trucks, like larger pickup trucks and like heavy duties. But I mean, Ford pulled out. Um, you know, Nissan doesn't do it anymore with it. Do you remember the Titan? You used to be able to get that one. Oh, the five liter Cummins? God, what yeah, you used to get horrible, the Cummins, the horrible Cummins engine. One of the least reliable engines ever built. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard oh, that. God, but it's like, but, disastrous. But I, think gonna, I think you're really going to start seeing, um, you know, I would not be surprised if GM is next. That would be so disappointing because that, th- that engine is the three liter Duramax. Oh my God. It's like, it's one of the best engines on sale. Nobody talks about mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But no, I mean, everybody... Exactly no one talks about it. That's why nobody's buying it. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're right. You're right. But, you know, it's such a tough sell because, like, there was a time in the mid-2000s when diesel was cheap. You know, it was mm-hmm. drastically cheaper than, than you know, 87 to 91 or 93. And, uh, Correct. And people started doing, like, break-even analyses on what it costs to get the extra power and the extra torque the extra fuel economy versus, mm-hmm. you know, the incremental or in some cases pretty substantial price jump for the diesel over the gas engines, you mm-hmm. know, and once diesel started getting comparably expensive with gas and then eventually more expensive than gas, it's just like in the case of a Ram, if you're buying a Ram 2,500 or 1,500, how do you justify $6,000 extra, mm-hmm. you know, on the engine when you're already spending, you know, like 60 Mm -hmm. and most people get out of the trucks in three to four years, three to five years, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so, it's a shame it never took off. I mean, and I, you know, it it sucks that you can't buy (laughs) any passenger cars right now with a diesel in it either. I mean, like I was on a walk today and I saw a Volkswagen, um, I think it was a Jetta TDI wagon, and I was like, "Oh, that would be such a fun car to have as a daily." Remember the Chevy it or Cruise it? Diesel? Yeah, no. you know, yeah, what they made a you, Cruise Diesel hatchback. Cruise? That's right. You could get the hatchback yeah. with a diesel. I was going to yep. say that's going to be a unicorn in a couple of years. That'll be a uh, cars and bids sale in twenty twenty four. Oh yeah, it'll go for like eighty grand or something. Probably <laughs> <laughs> hipsters. <laughs> oh man. So, anyways, enough diesel. Holy crap! Sorry, what? the quoted number on that Chevy Cruze diesel was seventy mpg. What? It's car and not, driving. not domestic. That's got to be. It says Ecotech overseas. Look it up on the what is it? What's on the EPA? Go to fueleconomy.gov. I'd be super curious. I mean, is I, it literally fueleconomy.gov? Yeah, fueleconomy.gov, yeah. and then you look for power search. No, I never drove. With, I never drove the cruise with the the diesel like that. Would have been, and I think they offered it in the Malibu briefly too. Maybe really, hmm. it could It'd be interesting to compile. <laughs> yeah, to compile a list of <laughs> the passenger cars that were sold here with diesel engines over the last mm-hmm. fifteen years. So mm-hmm. it is a hyper mile test from car and driver. Oh well, that's oh, hyper mile. Yeah, that's, yeah okay. I mean, so they're so going they got- thirty on. A 55 mile right. an hour highway. 30 and uh, sixth downhill. It said, turn off the AC, windows up, California freeway, cruise set at 55, 10, minute, 10 miles an hour under the limit, just to, and then touch the brakes and throttle as little as possible. That's not, that doesn't replicate the real world in any right. and means even, of the Even though that's like, you know, even though that hypermiling does obviously work and I think it's probably pretty dangerous to go under the speed limit on the highway. Like rather scientifically than more dangerous. Scientifically, yep. Um, but if that is all in fact true, and I mean, I I totally believe car and driver. I've been a subscriber forever. Uh, I that I mean, seventy miles per gallon that is phenomenal. And I mean, maybe we maybe one of us needs to buy a cruise diesel and try it own. Chris, there you go. That's your uh, that's your commuter. Yeah, dude, you should do that. You were yeah. I I heard on the I heard on the last show at Lieberman you did. You were looking for. Sienna hybrids and like the Sienna hybrids awesome but like dude if you can find a cruise diesel right go make it happen so 2018's cruise diesels with a turbo were mm-hmm. 31 city 47 highway for 37 combined interesting not spectacular so but it <laughs> in there in the government's calculations that's two thousand dollars in annual fuel costs 
based on what twelve thousand and change a year or something. Yeah, yeah I'd just be curious to see how that stacks up. I, the, the EPA ratings, like with electric and gas, are always like a hit or a miss. I don't. I, the, the EPA, I think, is just outdated as all hell. So it's mm-hmm. like, I think every car I've tested, almost that um, I've seen an EPA rating, I've like way bettered it. And maybe that's because I drive like a grandpa. But yeah, yeah, that's interesting because I've seen a lot better on some cars too. Um, <laughs> and I think it's just driving style because there are a lot of people who come back and they're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like you know, pipe dream. There's no chance I was getting that gas mileage. <laughs> right, that's right. I was all excited because there was one with a 106 combined electricity with gas. I was like, it's a cruise. I was like, no, it's a Volt. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, is good. You can get a Volt too. I, I would love a Volt. They there aren't anything in, in my price range right now. So mm-hmm. am I, am I making it up or was there a diesel boxer engine Subaru an H six diesel? Not in the States, not in yeah, the States. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe overseas. I, I don't think, I don't think Subaru's ever gotten into diesel though, to tell you the truth. Maybe it was an Australia thing. Let's go with that. Uh, they, they, Subaru, I, I know for a fact Subaru's never had a diesel in the States. So, but maybe, uh, yeah, maybe overseas. 2009 <laughs> Foresters had a two liter turbo diesel. Two liter. Okay. None of the license plates so, so. attached to these vehicles are from the States. <laughs> Shocked. <laughs> anyway. And, and I'm pretty sure that's, Car Scoops uh, is an Australian website. So. <laughs> isn't Car Scoops, Car Scoops at AU? <laughs> It was it's dot com, but I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> that would have been the, the tell all. <laughs> I feel like the last time I was on Car Scoops, I was looking at stuff from Australia, <laughs> like. Mm-hmm. Or it's UK based. Excited. I think they're Australian. One of the two. Yeah, Australia. Same difference. Sorry, Joel. Sorry, Joel. <laughs> and and Chris. Chris. <laughs> so my my two the two Australians I talked to the most uh joel obviously and um oh fuck what is mick's last name he's belted radial online um i can't i'm not sure exactly what it is but they met each other they were in the same city and they literally posted a photo and i was like these are the only two australians i ever talked to and here you are together like (laughs) it's like glitch in the matrix (laughs) joel's like we were gonna text you a photo speaking of glitches in the matrix ruvian had a recall Oh man. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so there's for the audio listener, I'm now sharing the picture of Johnny Lieberman struck getting the recall check done to it because his synapses might be the best one I've seen. <laughs> well, it's, it's crazy because like, I mean, regardless if you are a hundred year old legacy automaker or a startup, whether you're selling a $20,000 car or a million dollar car, every vehicle is essentially going to have a recall at some point, something is going to go wrong. It is completely normal. Um, and I think that it's really a shame that, you know, a lot of these like big like media outlets, but then also all these like Wall Street investor fools, all these people are like freaking out and they're like, Rivian is done, Rivian is done. And like, mm-hmm. I just saw a story today that was like, Rivian shares plummet due to recall, massive recall. And I'm like, first of all, they've built 12, 13,000 vehicles. Um, Second of all, they are recalling it, unlike Tesla, who there's so much shit that goes wrong with <laughs> Tesla that they just don't even bother recalling. Um, but then like the other thing too is like the recall itself. So it's it's a I guess it is a bolt that connects the upper control arm to like the steering knuckle. Supposedly that's what the issue is, and it could come off and it could mess up your steering. Obviously, we don't want that. Um, but in some research that I was doing earlier, like the recall takes a couple of minutes to fix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like, what Johnny said. It, they were like five yeah. minutes in and out. Yeah, uh, Kyle Connor from um, Out of Spec, you know, they do such great like EV stuff. Um, he posted something the other day that was like, yeah, it took longer to fill out the paperwork to get the recall fixed than to have the bolt tightened. So it's, it's, it's really a shame that people not in the auto industry that just Mm. don't know how things work in the auto industry are taking one little thing and just trying to like bury a startup because of it it's just and again it's like the majority majority of like the vocal people are just like the the wall street investment goons you know that are like oh like follow me for financial advice i'm gonna help you get rich like just people that should not be paying attention yeah the The gme and bros are not the best versed on the viability of a car company based on one little issue. 
Meanwhile, Tesla roofs are flying off and they have not recalled that. You know, it's like, uh-huh. <laughs> we could do a whole show on uh, on Tesla fuckery, but you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What yeah. fun is getting pissed off for an hour? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, here you go. Like, again, like- shocking YouTube title taking the Rivian R1T in for the suspension recall was a breeze. Mm-hmm. He's not going to play the algorithm with that one. No. No. <laughs> no. But it was well, good. And, like, and like and and kyle like whenever kyle does content on evs i mean like i have a lot of respect for his team like they're they're good people they're very transparent they don't bullshit um you know if he says it takes a minute or two to do then it takes a minute or two to do it's not yeah. like he's trying to he's not getting paid by rivian or something like that you know? right right yeah so again it's a tiny little recall it's not the end of the world rivian is not going underwater like it's okay Calm down, folks. <laughs> his uh, his road trip with the Rivian R1T to pick up a used Nissan Leaf mm-hmm. was kind of interesting. Yeah, that was fun to follow along. <laughs> it was fun to follow along, but it was fun to watch how they had to park at each charger with the oh, truck. Oh, that and a was him. Oh, my yeah, God. that was him. Yeah, it's it's a shame that um, public charging stations, at least here in the Midwest. Uh, and from what I've seen other places that they're, they're not set up for, you know, anything, vehicles, yeah. anything bigger than a leaf or like a, a Prius or a, a model three, you know, it's like, um, if you're towing, good luck. I mean, you shouldn't have to, you know, it should be set up like a gas station where if you are towing, you can pull through rather than like, Oh, uncoupling your trailer and then backing into a spot um or just a, standard you know truck and trailer length spots like you have at a rest stop yeah yeah There's yeah a lot of real estate goes into that but 100 percent. and it's it's crazy because like a lot of these evs coming out you know some of them are like you know promoting their towing capabilities like you can tow with the f-150 lightning albeit not that long but you can tow and, with it you, know, you can tow with the, the the bmw ix like all these other vehicles the ev6 you can tow with if you really wanted to um and yeah, if you guys are gonna keep like pitching these towing ratings with EVs, like you got to make sure these charging stations are set up because like right. it's not right to, to yeah. Here we go. Oh, look at that old range. Oh man. man, that is a beautiful trailer. <laughs> it's a really nice trailer. trailer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice truck too, but goddamn, dude, the ramps oh, are installed man. underneath. Look at it; it looks fantastic. I just want that Range Rover. If I if I'm ever brave enough and have the the deep pockets i need to pick up an old range rover like that there was there was part of me today that as someone drove past me and it's, it wasn't that old of a range rover it was probably like a 2012 2015 as they went past me today and i was kind of like man is there an engine in that thing that i could get better mileage out of and just have a more comfortable <laughs> ride there like, is not <laughs> i know and that's like but that's literally everything i pass on the street right now it's it's not even like it's better mileage a more comfortable ride is what i'm thinking about constantly because Mm-hmm. the suburban is great like it really is great it chews up miles but like it's big <laughs> yes yeah. for yeah. one guy driving as far as i do yeah yeah mm. i'm trying mm. to find his rivian towing pictures with the chargers they're so deep he posts a lot ross have you towed anything with an electric vehicle yet no nope. i have only driven one ev it was the ev6 um mm-hmm. i you know spent i barely drove it but it was amazing um mm-hmm. i have a lightning coming up and nice. you know we'll see i don't know if i'm gonna i don't think i'm gonna actually tow with it because the utv driver guys have already done a towing test with the lightning um mm-hmm. i think i'll probably load a quad in the bed and write it up for atv rider but yeah it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it you know how the, the range is affected by payload too you know because towing obviously there's mass that you physically have to drag but increasing payload you know curious to see what happens as you approach the payload what is the payload of the f-150 light that is a that's good a, question that's, that's a really good point because like i so many reviews i've seen where people have like you know taken an ev that does have like you know towing or hauling capacity and the majority of the time it's always just towing where it's like they don't like put anything in the actual bed itself so i'd be very mm-hmm. curious to see And I think that's important too, you know, if you look at your contractors that are buying like a, you know, a base F-150 Lightning and they want to like load it up with mulch or something like that or lumber or whatever, whatever people put in the back of their pickup trucks. Um, 
yeah how's that going to affect range i'd be super curious about that so i will definitely stay yeah tuned to that. same and and it, it ties into you know obviously the range drops dramatically when you tow with an ev um but people also you know there's a proportion to it the same way there's a proportion to what your fuel economy drops when you tow with a gas or diesel engine you know mm-hmm. and usually it's a higher proportion drop with gas than diesel um mm-hmm. and it's the same thing with payload you know if you have a uh i don't know a suburban and you load it up to full payload it's going to get worse gas mileage than if it's not you know mm-hmm. and i, I mm-hmm. i'm kind of curious to see if the payload um has you know getting close to it has any impact on range the same way that it, it would with gas mileage so we'll see we'll circle back yeah. on that yeah post about <laughs> it definitely curious yep yep so i'm still shocked you didn't drive the ev6 very much uh it was i think two weeks after baby was born so okay that makes i sense. wasn't doing much of anything that week <laughs> <laughs> and every time you would leave her side she'd be like get back here <laughs> i will i will say Best this about the EV, i will say this about the ev6 real quick um and ross maybe you experienced it a little bit but um i think one of the most overlooked thing about that car is got to be how once you drop the rear seats how gigantic the cargo area is um oh, i didn't say i fit. did that you didn't say yeah it's okay no um but yeah, I was able to haul around like a bicycle in the back and like, it doesn't look like it would be very cavernous, you know, it's got like that very like slope roof line and mm-hmm. it's kind of like narrow, like when you look at the D pillars on it. Um, but it is a, it is a colossal, colossal cargo area in that thing. And a long car. Yeah, it's a very long car. Um, you know, it's, I, it's 185 got the, inches it's got, long. It's got the same wheelbase as a Telluride. I mean, yeah, it's it's a gigantic cargo area. I mean, I would say that's even better than like some crossovers that are bigger. Even than that. even that's with the seat up in my like, truck, it's, mm-hmm. you're paying attention to it. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. like it was a lot of space. Like I was, I've been flipping through images, and even with the seat up, I was like, good lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the dimensions are off the top of my head. Um, I just had a Kia Sportage hybrid that had, I think, seventy three point six cubic Dang. feet of cargo room with the seats dropped i mean that was also gigantic i feel like kia does a good job of like designing their vehicles to not look like they offer a ton of cargo room but then you mm. open it up flop the seats down and you can fit oh my god yeah everything. i was reading you know grand wagoneer l reviews came out this week and i was reading the cargo space on that did you see what that is no, no hold no. on does it start with a two Hang on, <laughs> because I know the Lexus behind the second row is like 37. Mm-hmm. Um, behind the third row of the Grand Wagoneer is 44. Behind the third row? Behind the third row is 44. Um, and it, it's just telling me, I got to dig a little deeper, but it's 113 with seat area. So let's see. That's insane. Uh, the original Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer, like, like when i've driven them like yeah there's there wasn't that much room behind the third row like there was like some Wait, but you said 44 grand... behind the third row yeah yeah damn so there's more behind the third row than there is behind the second row in my truck so the third row in the suburban is 39.3 Jeez. and that seems like <laughs> plenty so going to 44 mm-hmm. yeah it's, Kelly, can I please borrow a Grand Wagoneer L? <laughs> it's 113 <laughs> cubic feet of space and a four by eight will fit flat. Yeah, well, and that was that's the thing with the, you know, when the Grand Wagoneer and the Wagoneer first came out, they were short on cargo volume to compete with like Yukon XL, Suburban. It was definitely more Tahoe sized. So that's yeah, why you've yeah. got these new extended wheelbase mm-hmm. L models out now. Dude, that's such a big number. Crazy. It's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, I didn't notice that about the EV6 though, but it was. Mm-hmm. So, can I get a Wagoneer oh, L four by E yet? Like, <laughs> uh, they should be. Uh, supposedly, they should be doing a four by E pretty soon. I mean, they announced a while ago that they're going to have a four by E in every one of their vehicles. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting is that so we were kind of discussing this is that if you go on Jeep's website, and if you go to some dealerships, they really split jeep and wagoneer 
one of them being you know like the more like luxury stuff brand la, 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 la. so it's their uh-huh. version of genesis I, I mean i guess you could kind of say that but yeah here's jeep over here here's it's, wagoneer over here it's split on like cars.com too wagoneer has yep. its own yep subset and- not only are the word splits, the cars are literally grouped separately. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And once once they have the new, um, you know, they're going to have the electric Wagoneer S. That's going to be coming out relatively soon. That's going to be a Wagoneer, not like a Jeep. But when they were talking about their, when, when Stellantis was talking about their electrification plan, they said that every Jeep is going to have a 4 by e So it's like, at first we were all like, oh my God, like plug-in hybrid, like Grand Wagoneer, Wagoneer. But then now we're kind of like, hmm. If every Sneaky. Jeep is, but Sneaky. they're yes. breaking Sneaky. it off as Wagoneer. Kind of like when, when Volvo said that every car would be electrified and everybody went, oh my God, every Volvo is going to be totally electric. Mm-hmm. Hold your well, horses a, there, that's buddy. A huge, that's a humongous uh, discrepancy among automakers right now is electrified versus electric. And like yes. when, we, when we at Auto Pacific do our like research, we really need to like ensure that people know that electrified does not mean strictly electric mm-hmm. vehicles um you know because yeah. like you have plug-in hybrids you have full evs you've got mild hybrids you've got traditional hybrids i mean you could even call a traditional hybrid an electrified vehicle um yes but to not some, to some electric extent. yes correct there's um, a- And like you look at Genesis, like to go back to Genesis, you know, they've got their ICE products, but then they have um, two EVs right now and the electric GV70 on the way, but they call them their electrified. Oh, God. I know. Get your shit together. (laughs) So so I think, unfortunately, I think the discrepancies are going to be really confusing, like for consumers, like trying to like find an electric car, like, oh, I really want an electric car. Oh yeah, this is electrified. Like it's got a, mm-hmm. a, a plug-in hybrid system. Oh, but it's not electric. Oh yeah, but it's electrified. God, yeah, it's, it's infuriating. I would absolutely drive that electrified G80. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it well, is gorgeous. Gangster, it, yeah. is, it is gorgeous. I, I have not driven the G80. I love the G70. I think that's one of the, the, the most enjoyable cars you can buy right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say one thing that Genesis did well with the electrified G80 from what I can see, the fact that the charging port is right on the nose. I think that's where they should Hmm. be on every EV instead of like on the fenders or like on the back. Like when you have an EV that has like a charge port on like the rear fender, that just makes it such a pain in the ass. I feel to like the EV six. Yeah. Like the EV six or I had a, um, I had a uh, BMW i4 M50 a couple weeks ago, which is a, a, a rocket ship of a car mm. and um yeah yeah see like that's the way it should be that's brilliant i mean yeah. it standardize looks- it across the board that would make it yeah. so easy yeah i mean it's it's you know it's interesting how like you know if you think about it like i would say 90 percent of fuel fillers for gas cars except for like what porsches i think are on the front fender or something like that mm-hmm. but, like, everyone else has essentially standardized it um I mean, you, it's crazy. Like if you look back like 20, 30, 40 years ago, you had like gas caps, like under the license plate, you had them like on top of the fender, you had mm-hmm. a tail light. I mean, there was like 80 different ways to like yep. put a gas cap on a car. I mean, yeah, I think a simplified, like, you know, just all right. Every charge port here would work, but I don't know. I don't work for NHTSA, so I can't tell you what to do. <laughs> Nor do I want to. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it's the prospect of you know like trying to tell people that yes to charge it you will probably have to back into the spot every single time Mm -hmm. you know like some people that's going to be a non-starter for some people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. versus like i don't know we've probably all seen somebody who pulls into the gas pump the wrong way and has to like you know flip around but or or go go over the car but you know that's People are used to that. <laughs> so you're, like, you're describing <laughs> Costco now, going over the car. Yeah, exactly. Speaking so, of so. speaking of um of large vehicles, did you guys see the official trailer for the Transit Trail? <laughs> I talked to Ross about this. Oh yeah, is there an actual trailer? Well, I'm sorry, not trailer, but like the teaser. teaser. Yeah, yeah, it's a teaser. Oh, I'm so excited! It looks so good. It it's a thing. 
Chris, uh, Chris's work contract prohibits from him from saying anything positive about no, him it, already no. upfitted van. Can you not, can you not talk about it? I can. No, I, I don't. Here's, here's what I say is I don't know anything different than what anybody else knows is what I would tell you. So um, there, the potential of somebody else at work knowing more is very high. Okay. Um, it has not trickled down to me yet. Um, mm. I'm really I just curious. Right, I'm gonna go right into that picture right there. When they showed that picture, when Ted, <laughs> when when Ted Canis, who is uh, head of Ford Pro, like posted that, um, I just like did a full screen zoom on that picture, and I'm like, ah, that's where I want to be right now, right in that canoe, or right inside there making coffee in the morning. I mean, look at that. That looks so much like paradise right there. I'm so excited for it. I want to sell everything I own and get that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm mostly curious if there's going to be, you know, obviously it's going to have like a little bit of lift and all the rain tires and, you know, as much lighting as they can cram into it for the price point. But I'm curious if it's got like a real diff, you know, or if it's still kind of like just an all wheel, shifty all wheel drive system. Well, I think it's going to have, I think it's going to have a rear locker. I could go cool. wrong. That pretty would be cool. pretty cool. I may have read that somewhere. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, like you also got to wonder like how much off-roading are these people going to be doing? I mean, with like a, with a suspension lift and some AT tires and, um, skids maybe some skid. Yeah. I'm sure it'll have skids. And then, you know, it looks like it's going to have plenty of cladding. I mean, we've seen some teaser photos of like the European or spy photos of like the European version, which I'm pretty sure is going to be a, essentially a direct clone of this. Um, will it, I'm will it be based Ford. on the transit custom though? No, 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 no. The oh, the the, Euro, the European one is essentially a direct clone of what I think we're getting. Okay. Yeah. The not, transit, not, the not transit, transit custom, connects, transit yeah. custom. Yeah, the transit okay. custom I think is like a little bit smaller. If I yeah, it's slightly smaller in the regular transit. Do they still get a transit ST in no. Europe? That would be cool though. Wasn't there a transit ST with a stick that you could get for a while? Uh, I don't know, but they just did a super van over the summer, but I thought that was a, based off an EV powertrain, wasn't it? Because I think that was at Goodwood Festival of Speed. Yeah, that was, I, I don't know anything about it except that, yeah, it was electric. I'm going to have to do some digging to figure this out. I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Chris, I have, a, I have a, a, a van question for you, a camper van question for you, if you're allowed to talk about it or not. Um, uh, my vans, absolutely. Okay. Do you so nothing that's prototyped, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> obviously, I want to respect that. Do you see? So Ford is no longer going to do the Transit Connect. Correct. Um, and Van Do It is is it mostly just full size vans? Yeah, it's all full size vans. It's all full size vans. Have you ever had customers ask to do smaller vans? No, um, I have a coworker who does have his own Transit Connect that is outfitted for camping. He's a sing, a, a sing. It's basically set up as a one person camper. Mm -hmm. uh, it works for him. He's got an awning on it. Um, he's got a little. He's got a little uh, Max Van Deluxe Van Fan built into the roof. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've got another coworker who runs a Chevy Astro van with the all wheel drive system. Oh um, man, yeah, that yeah, I'm frame. That van is fantastic um, what did they what did they call the all-wheel drive system in that was it was it just stability track or was it like i thought it was like something more a cooler of a name for the all 80s drive. or 90s i'm not sure yeah. was it like quad plant or something <laughs> I, I feel like i feel like like gm lingo like, uh, like I feel it had some kind of you know marketing <laughs> oh like it. there's a, gm always has something but everything i see just says all-wheel drive system on the quick search i know they had all wheel driving like gold across the like lower rocker area. Oh, yeah. Well, and like, oh god, the 90s were so great. <laughs> don't forget, there was also the G. So, we had the Chevy <laughs> Astro, but you had the GMC Safari as well. Like, Ooh. before Safari was a thing, GMC had, and I think you should already. get a GMC Safari and Safari it and go on a Safari. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the GMC Safari was, I think their like all wheel drive thing was called like Advance Track without the E. I think that's what the lingo, but yeah, you're right. It was like Ross. It was like, if you bought like a, a, a Safari or a, a, a Savannah, um, well, no, hold on. Savannah's full GMC, size. 
the van I pulled. Okay, but I guess like either or, but like yeah, if you bought one of those vans back then and like you did like check the box for all wheel drive, it was like <laughs> right on the trunk, just like yeah. all wheel drive. It was called <laughs> all wheel drive ABS EFI. <laughs> it was called <laughs> Auto Track Two. Oh, that's kind of boring. Never mind. <laughs> that is fairly, yeah. Maybe, maybe it, that was wait. maybe that was just the fluids. <laughs> I've got a very that, interesting oh website that I'm scanning. <laughs> Weren't those like some of the least safe vehicles ever built? Like the crash tests were basically just like tin can pancake status. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I I mean, if you look at the um, I feel like that I feel like it had a ve- it had like very 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 short overhangs on that vehicle, especially front and rear. Yeah, yeah, and I think and I think you could get oh let's see Safari you could get it with a. Th- yeah, I think it was that was a three row van, right? I think it was a three row van. Yes. Yes. Oh man, I can like feel and smell the seat material in those things. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, oh yeah, hundred like nineties <laughs> cloth, man. Oh, it was the softest thing and the worst smelling thing in the hot sun ever. Yep. So oh. there was a tiger based. Um, so the the company like Tiger RVs made an ass like a an astro slash safari camper um and for whatever reason my google search images have like gone to a halt do you think do you think conversion vans will ever make a comeback no No. i mean they're still here there are transit versions of them um that's dope he's just got like a full on door yeah, like it's Sometimes, got a full RV. It's a do, new body basically from the front row back. Wow. Random stuff will cool. come up like this on Expedition Portal every once in a while. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's time warp. It's total time warp. Oh my God. What did you find? Did you I'm find watching the crash test video. Oh man. Oh my God. See, and I always wanted Ross when we talk about like horrible things for crash oh testing God. i always wanted a chevy chalet what is that the fuck is it's a chevy, chevy blazer with an rv on the back of it and they called it a chalet okay yeah. that's very yes cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so th- this is the chevy k5 blazer chalet they also did a gmc they get to keep the k5 um jimmy did they just do they just duplicate the taillight on the back of that yes it looks like. they that, didn't eliminate hilarious. it they just add it to the back but this is made by gm um, that was from the factory yes mm-hmm. you could there there's like 1300 oh, of them in the world or like 3000 like it's some crazy low number the jimney version is called the sierra grand oh very nice or sierra grande like um so you can have a jimmy sierra grande or a blazer chalet <laughs> what would you if you had to pick a new how about this here's a fun question if you had to pick a new uh, pickup truck and do exactly what we just saw, like a modern day, like Sierra Grand or whatever that other one was just called, the Chalet, what would you do? So you mean if other than the, the Ford F550 that everyone seems to use and put a camper on the back of? Yep. Yep. Like, what would you do? Like, like I, like, I think like a Nissan Frontier. Like a new frontier mm-hmm. with like a body color like camper on top. Well, you don't like the frontier. I like the frontier, but I I think the the duration of time you would spend with the frontier before the novelty wore off would not be that long. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Ram Ram Rebel twenty five hundred. So oh. the new one that the new the one. ones, not yep. a power wagon. Not a power wagon because the power wagon's payload rating is shit. Abysmal. Mm-hmm. Um, and this will you know this will have the the full bore 2500 payload and mm-hmm. rear locker and uh yeah it's cummins there you go so i've seen them in person robbie but it, it, people taking aev prospectors the ram aev prospectors that, and oh, throwing ca- campers on the back like that is a rig that I, as it went by mm-hmm. i was like i need to pick my jaw up off the or, <laughs> wait <laughs> why are we having this conversation taco zilla exists yeah, yeah. Tacozilla doesn't fit enough people for me. <laughs> Tacozilla also just doesn't fit anywhere. That thing is fucking massive. Is it's it so cool? Oh, have you seen huge. it? Have you seen it in person? Mm-mm. I saw it at the auto show. Yeah, I don't know. I think yeah, I was with had Camille. Auto show. Was, yeah, it was so cool. It's they did a wild. really good job on it. <laughs> it's really tall. It's really tall. It or will these people not are fit really short. Any, 
any kind of you know container or whatever to ship i uh, know that's yeah it's have you it's, guys seen the the loki base camp slide ins oh man this if is going to be a fun night where we trade stories. <laughs> do you know, but, you know, if you pause real quick, if if Toyota sold something like the Takozilla through the dealer when you're buying it, because, you know, they sell a million Tacomas every week. If they sold something that was like legitimate and good through the dealer, it, you'd see them everywhere. They're everywhere. I, I tend to think that, Tacoma probably has the most people doing something like that with it. Obviously, mm-hmm. the Tacoma sells more, you know, than any other midsize truck. But even compared to like F one fifty Sierras, like I, I think, I think the general rule and like the gold standard for overlanding and exploration in that way is just buy a Toyota. You know, well, as well, many I mean, downsides like as there are, a Tacoma like and a Go Fast Camper, and you're done. Yeah. Like if you're if you're at a campground and you see somebody in a, a Ford F one fifty pull up with one of those like pop and camper things, like the, my first thought is like I'm gonna be murdered, I'm gonna be killed, something <laughs> is gonna destroy me. Free Whereas, candy. Like, if you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody like I'm about to die. Whereas like if you're at a campground <laughs> and you see like a Tacoma pull up with one of those pop things, like oh that person's like adventurous. This person. No, that guy's gonna, about like, to come talk to me about microbrews. Yeah, yeah. No, he's gonna uh, have a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> or, or that guy's got tequila and this is going to be a fun night. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know. yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's like, it's the universal, you know, speak for, I want to go places and do shit and, you know, mm-hmm. not have problems. Even if like the seating position is terrible and, you know, the transmission in the automatic is the worst automatic transmission in the last, you know, 15 years. Um <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. So I saw these guys at uh, Expo West. It's Loki, Loki Base Camp is what their their brand is. And it's basically an aluminum slide in. <laughs> um, and I what I was enamored with was just the sheer amount of like solar and then vents. Oh, and that's cool. All cool. kinds of stuff. It, it is a big rig though. Oh. Um, but it's that not guy, that heavy. That looks like the ultimate remote personal surveillance rig. Yeah, I was it, looking at too, like some FBI stuff. So what was that real quick? If, if you go back, was that like a slide out gear tray? Or something? Yeah, it's got gear, gear trays at the back for you. Mm-hmm. And then the spare, instead of being like up against flat, just sits above the tailgate um, straight out. Like there's not, there's no swing out on that. That's just how they, they have it up there like that. Could you imagine taking that through a car wash? Well, I wouldn't take it to a car wash. I'd go to a car wash bay. I know, the same like one just, I probably just, used to but, take the vans into well, yeah, and yeah, spray like it just, down. But just, just, just for fun. Could you imagine taking that through a car wash? What no. would happen? That'd be wild. The, cra- day to wash. the crazy part is I think this whole ladder set up to the left swings towards us. And then the whole back of that can be hinged up. So how much does that unit right there cost that goes into the back of that super duty? It's six figures holy shit also wait i need some clarification on this ladder system. are you saying that the ladders can do something like what ladders in old school libraries do no it swings out oh i see your question oh. that would be kind of cool because like that would be the right across the back yeah, to get was, something yeah. on the other side yeah, yeah that'd yeah, be yeah. awesome that'd be absolutely ballers though yeah but the the interiors are um really interesting because they went with the same um they went with a lot of uh materials for just like durability mm-hmm. here's our kevlar toilet seat <laughs> i mean not quite but yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, that thing looks it actually isn't a terrible life yeah no it's great kevlar toilet <laughs> seats are awesome <laughs> Yeah, if All you're right. like pooping in the woods and you need a bear to come attack you or something, you hold right. it or something like that. Oh that would man. Be crazy. So I Robbie, Robbie's, so Robbie's reading Ross's mind. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Doubles as vest. <laughs> uh, so Robbie, so what else have you been driving? What's going on in your world? Because uh, I know we're we're brushing up on our hour here, so I want to get some yeah, of your yeah, stuff yeah, in. Yeah, the uh, Let's see. So I just got out of the 
Kia Sportage it... Hybrid, which was oh, great. Okay. I thought you were um, talking about the Jag. <laughs> oh, I did have a Jaguar. I, I, I wasn't going to talk about that on the, on the show just because it's not a, a, a crossover I, SUV all-wheel drive kind of thing. I, I would tell you that our audience likes... Uh, they, they're good for entertaining cars as well. They're not. All right. Well, then let's talk about the Jaguar because that was my favorite one of all. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Um, oh, a, it's so pretty. Right. So I had a... Uh, 2022 uh f-type p450 rear wheel drive um and uh yeah i kind of had an epiphany about the industry and where it's going and um jaguar land rover's future driving this uh i mean simply put uh supercharged five liter v8 444 horsepower um one of the best sounds in cars it's it is a wonderful sounding car um you know you throw it in a dynamic mode you, you open up the exhaust um there are there are very few cars that are just so uh emotional like have soul and this, this doesn't yeah so did robbie just freeze robbie froze oh no a convertible for a week and Brenna, my fiance and I um, have made a tradition of like just taking taking it out on a weekend and going for a drive and like checking out the fall colors. We had a Mini Cooper last year, uh, which was I last. remember that now that you say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we had a BMW Z4 the other year. So yeah, we had this yeah. Jaguar and we just um, I drove the hell out of it. It is it is a it is just a lovely car and um, it honestly sucks that they're getting rid of it uh jaguar announced i mean they're going all electric starting in 2025 and um they just announced like yesterday or two days ago that you know the f-type is ending in 2024 mm. and um it's it it sucks because like for for as long as i can remember um you know jaguar has had you know stately luxury cars and they've had some like luxury SUV things um, but they have also always had this like raw, gritty V8, you know, mm -hmm. premium sports car that just sounds wicked. It looks super sexy. Um, it's just a very lustful product. And uh, it, I know like for a while now, I've been like, oh, EVs, let's go all EV, EVs, EVs, EVs. But, you know, after driving almost 300 miles in this F-Type with the the convertible down pretty much all the time, even in 40 degree weather. Um, it really just kind of struck me. And I was like, I, I'm going to retract that statement because like, while there should be some vehicles that I do believe, you know, yeah. Okay. Go make the F pace and the I pace and the J pace and whatever all the other crossovers e -pace, are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, e pace. Them. Make them all, them all. EV. Yeah. Make them all EVs. That's fine. But like, you know, mm -hmm nothing is ever going to replace that f types v8 grunt you know rumbling and the sound and just the, the the feel you just cannot mimic that with an electric car and i was like i was like when i when i took it out on sunday night for a drive i like i like got like genuinely sad about it because i'm like this sucks that this is the end of like the era for that car um and I don't know. It's, it's just, it's really a, a, a damn shame to tell you the truth. I mean, like it, it, nothing, nothing, if they make another F type and it's all electric, nothing is ever going to come close to having as much soul as that gas powered F type I had. I mean, just a, just a delightful car to drive. Not, Absolutely. not for us and our generation, at least like there will probably be a, you know, succeeding generation that has that kind of emotion and connection with an EV, but like, you're right yeah. for for us there i mean you know no. the right looking yeah. car in the right configuration with the right engine the right exhaust sound is like it, it is the best um, yeah and, it's 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 ethereal i hate to say it you know it, it's it's just it's so good and it's like and so yeah that was kind of like a wake-up call like i was like now I'm not fully on board with the EV train as much as I used to because it's like some cars are just gonna you're, you're just gonna you're gonna kill the point of the car and you cannot replace it you know it's like yeah yeah I mean it also just has to be said out loud again to to reiterate this that 
that is probably the prettiest back end on a car of the last <laughs> 20 years. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It is just the best design. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. It, it, they nailed it. The convertible looks better than the hard top. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, almost in front, never. In the front end, I was like, you know, I loved the first F type when it first came out. It's perfect. Um, Absolutely. Oh yeah. Perfect. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a stunning looking car. Um, and when the 2020, 2021 facelift came out, um, whatever the most recent facelift was, I was like, not entirely like enamored with the new front fascia. Like they got rid of like the really angular, you know, fenders and like the, it, to me, it looked a little bit more generic, but, um, you know, after finally getting to, to live with one for a week, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's jaw dropping any angle you look at it. And it almost looks a little bit more like Aston Martin now than it ever used to. I mean, especially as Aston increases the grill size and, you know, width and height yeah, and goes yeah. smaller with the headlights, like yeah, Jack is just right it's, there. It's like, I, I was having a conversation with someone the other day about how Aston Martin's styling is just kind of like, you know, you like take your glasses off and you're like, what the hell is happening? It's, lo- it's lost. Like, yeah, it's lost. It's lost. And I feel like the F, the F type is, it's, it is, it is sleek. It is exotic, but it is clean. It is not trying too hard. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, there are not very many cars that I test for work where like at the end of the day, when I get the keys back, I'm like, man, I really miss that car. Like it was a special car. And I, I strongly encourage anyone, if you ever get a chance to go drive one or go for a ride in one, please do. Cause it's, it's, definitely one of the best sounding and most enjoyable vehicles that you can buy right now bargain to used mm-hmm. yeah oh yeah and brings I was, me back. i've already spent some time on car van looking around <laughs> it <laughs> i was like oh let's see what i could find yeah that, that's a slippery slope mm-hmm. oh it's such a good vehicle yeah well, sweet yeah i think that's probably the most exciting i mean i drove the i had the sportage hybrid that was great 33 grand uh, loaded to the gills with great features, uh, 36 miles per gallon, good vehicle, uh, explore Timberline. That was pretty fun. Um, terrible engine, but pretty fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. The two, three, it was just, yeah. I mean, it was cool. I'll tell you what, like is, is much of a, you know, not super inspiring product as the explorer is like i don't know if i'm gonna go through a crossover and i'm not gonna call the explorer an suv anymore because that's not body on frame um you know if i'm gonna go through a crossover i'm gonna get a a telluride or a palisade but um the suspension refinements that they did the the explorer timberline the tires just the you know they tightened up the steering a little i guess it's got the same steering rack as the police interceptor which i did not know um but the Explorer Timberline actually kind of felt somewhat like a body on frame SUV just a tiny bit when I was driving it. Um, it's not good. Like generally body on frame feels worse than yeah, that's, unibody, that's true. But generally that's, speaking, you know, there's charm yeah. to, you know, to like the truck feel, but you know, that's in a family vehicle, you don't want it to drive worse. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that is true. But I, I guess like, you know, with, with this new wave of like soft off-roaders uh, um you know some soft off-roaders you drive and it's like all right yeah this is like off-road capable but it still feels like a little bit like you know like something's gonna break or something like that whereas like the explorer timberline even though it is you know car-based platform like it did actually feel actually rugged which was mm. nice so oh, i got you i hear what you mean i don't know. yeah i should have said yeah 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 no i i get it i get it um yeah so yeah yeah. that's that's really it for me that's that's kind of what's going on in my world i uh i get married in 10 days which i'm really excited about yeah holy crap i didn't know it was that soon yeah (laughs) preemptive congratulations thank you i appreciate it i'm trying to do the math okay all right i don't have any kids birthdays around your your (laughs) potential anniversary date so i'm trying to find a way to memorize that (laughs) yeah I'm, i'm i'm super excited we actually uh within the past week or so we've been able to uh secure my dream car is like our getaway car Ooh, nice um we are getting a i think it's a 70 a 1970 vw bus okay Fuck. like a like a west so yeah, yeah that's I perfect super excited about but 
to a T. That's that's nail on that for you. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Amazing. That's <laughs> well, so I good. I figure if you're a car guy, you gotta have your, your yeah, you gotta have your dream car at your wedding. It's like, come on. Oh yeah. I yeah. drove away in an Acura MDX. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> that's still in the family. Uh, oh, well, that's even more special. We got married in 2007. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you do a massive like neutral drop burnout when you were? Mm, no. <laughs> no. Pull the fuse for traction control. <laughs> by, the, by the time we left our wedding, like we were some of the last people to leave the actual reception. Like, because mm-hmm. my Irish Catholic family got together with my wife's Italian Catholic family. And so like our reception was just a massive party. <laughs> so, oh, nice. That's like, that's like a good that's it was, that's it was, true. it was a long night. It was to the point where I was like, I'm tired. Can we go now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap the show up. You can rate and review the show, uh, Apple I, uh, Podcasts. I always forget. It's not iTunes anymore. Apple iPodcasts. Apple iPodcasts. You'll figure it out. Uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. You can follow Robbie. He's at Robbie underscore DeGraph AP on Twitter. And you can follow at Auto Pacific as well on Twitter. Both are good follows. <laughs> Thank you. One's my friend and the other one's just got uh, good things. On them, so. <laughs> You can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends on Instagram. He does, he has Twitter, but he doesn't know how to use it, which is my favorite comment he's ever made. I don't know how to use it. It's I don't want to. <laughs> you said I don't know how. Or, hey, or, car Twitter is <laughs> great. Car Twitter is a good You song. would love weird car Twitter, yeah. the group of weirdos. I don't have time <laughs> for that. that. Now that <laughs> I fully understand and support. Uh, I'm at Overlanding Dad, and you can read what mainly Ross writes on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer, and everyday driver. It's been a hot minute since I stumbled all of those. Uh, and That's I true. definitely messed them up. Yeah. <laughs> they forgive you. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie. Thanks, yeah, Robbie. absolutely. It was, it was, it's always a pleasure. It was good to see you guys and chat some cars. Yeah, man. Have fun at the wedding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.